With Alzheimer's it's different. They call it the long goodbye, and for good reason. My name is Maureen Bosch and I am the program coordinator here at Clare Bridge of Vero Beach where um, we have Alzheimer's and many different forms of dementia here. I plan the daily activities from morning till probably about dinner time. I do activities with the residents and my big uh, focus is the music, the music aspect of it all because I'm also a board certified music therapist. The phenomenon with that is that when we listen to music or when we engage in music and we act actively participate, emotionally respond, all these different aspects of how we respond to music or engage, uh, interact with it, our brain gets activated, multiple areas of the brain. So it's not just one area. Like language is in the left hemisphere. Well, music's not in one spot in the brain. It's all over the brain. And so when somebody no longer can talk or speak anymore, you can still reach them and they can find words again through music because it's somewhere else in the brain. Um, it's pretty fascinating. You can work with people who have had strokes and no longer can speak anymore and you can actually teach them to speak because the brain will create a new pathway for them to find those words. It's hard to determine what exactly happened. Um, all we know is that that day in June, he was having a seizure. I, I don't wish this on anybody because I think it's probably harder in many ways than... Um, I think it's probably like stages of grief. Um, I think you go through anger, um, denial, and then acceptance, and um, and that I think I did. I went through all of that. All the things that he had achieved were kind of uh, lost, and um, everyone who met him never knew the real Larry and all of the things that he accomplished in his life. He was an artist and a musician. He would um, write his own music sing along to it. Um, he sculpted, he made jewelry. Um, there wasn't anything really that he couldn't do. Well let's just say that things were never dull around Larry. Never. He even uh, designed a swimming pool. Um, it was an above ground because we couldn't have an in-ground pool. There was so much ledge in Connecticut. You'd see him out there in the morning and he was like um, designing a piece of the deck that went off this way and by the time he finished the whole thing it was this piece of artwork. He was the gifted and talented um, teacher for several years for middle school children. He would lead them rather than direct them because um, he was kind of that type of person himself. You know, for him to make the decision to retire was very difficult because he loved it so much. We've got some funny, hilarious memories, thank God. But if I start to think about that, then you think about the loss. And that's not what you want to think about. You want to think about the gains. If you didn't lay the old Larry to rest, in a way, I think it would be um, unfair to the present Larry because he is, he is what he is right now and you can't hold him against the old Larry. Nobody could stand up to the old Larry. He was like bigger than life. When you see the reality of, of who they were, that, that can be a pretty heartbreaking thing to, to come to means with. But you can see that music is important to him. 
It's a huge part of his life. And it was a big part of his life before and he wants it to be a big part of his life now. So he actually reaches out to me and tries to find ways to participate in the music rather than just listening. And when he first moved here, his wife even said that you never would see him singing at the other place he lived. And now he's singing, he's playing the piano, he's, you know, he is musically gifted and has those skills. So when I sit down at a piano with him, I can actually teach him a chord and he can pick it up and he can learn it. And he wants to learn it and he wants to pick it up because this is something in his life that he was proud of and he was accomplished at and he was skilled at and he wants to have that back. He wants to have the control back. So I, I really love working with Larry too, just because I feel like it's bringing back his self-confidence and himself and his abilities. I think she felt as though there was a, a chance to bring part of him back. And something inside him must be um, getting fulfilled. And I really attribute it to um, opening up that window, or reopening that window to the music inside him. The happiness, the, um, the cheerfulness that surrounds him. Um, I don't feel bad when I leave and I, and I see him and I wave goodbye. It's, it's such a gift to be able to bring to them the joy and the excitement of music and that they can come to life again and, and show that there are still people and they still have personalities. And it's, it's my job to find, find how to reach them and how to bring them back to life again.